Hey guys and gals, it's your buddies Drew and Ralphie. With Living History's Mysteries and Ferocious Feline Productions. You know, every year when it gets time and it gets, the holidays get closer, we don't just think of ourselves or what we might be getting from old Saint Nick. We sit down and we try to think about those who aren't as fortunate as we are, who don't have all the niceties in life that we do, and ways we might be able to help them. Last year, we here at Living History's Mysteries took donations to help out the Toys for Tots and even the Adopt-A-Family thing. And we were able to do some good and bring some smiles to families and to children that somehow, for some reason, whatever the reason may be, life became a challenge and they couldn't succeed without a little bit of help. But it's that time of the year again where we start thinking of others. And once again this year, we here at Living History's Mysteries are taking up the mantle to adopt a family and do the secret Santa thing. If y'all wanna help out and be a part of it, it's gonna be an anonymous donation. It's gonna be in the name of Living History's Mysteries. Just click on the link right here, www.paypal.me slash Mr. History 2020. And give whatever you can, because every little bit helps. And it's gonna go to, to a couple worthy groups this year. One family and one organization right here in my hometown that's really been hit hard over the past two or three years. People just need help. The organization we're given to is a local organization that helps with clothing pantry, food pantry, helping veterans, the elderly, and the not so lucky make their bills and just survive. And of course, they can use all the help that they can get because they help so many needy groups. So like I said, just click on this link down in the description below the video and give what you can and once again this year let's help those that aren't as lucky have a happy holidays and all of us work together to share just a little bit of that holiday love y'all take care
Betty Jean Grayson in 1925 in Little Rock, Arkansas. She was the daughter of a prominent Arkansas physician who went on to become the state health officer. And her mother had a great singing voice and performed in their local First Baptist Church choir. From an early age, Betty Jean swam, golfed, and played tennis. Additionally, she was a superb horseback rider, later performing in rodeos. And like the original Annie Oakley, she was an expert trick shot. But what she really wanted to be was an actress. It was her dream. And she put legs to that dream. Betty Jean trained in drama and dance at the University of Texas. While there, she married Robert Davis in 1945, changing her name to Betty Davis. They were later to have a daughter named Terry. After World War II, they moved to Hollywood, where she worked as a hat check girl where she was discovered by an agent who set her up with an MGM screen test. And consequently, she was signed to a contract. But her name had to change. For you see, there already was a famous actress named Betty Davis. She said, I went under contract to MGM around 1946, but they told me, we can't have a Betty Davis because of Betty Davis. And we can't have a Betty Grayson because of Catherine Grayson. Then a guy in the casting department said, how about Gail Davis? So that's where it came from. Gail Davis. Really and truly, I wanted to be a musical comedy star. I thought, cheapers. they were super. That's the thing I want to do. Unfortunately, I didn't have the voice or the feet. In 1949, she hooked up with movie producer and cowboy star Gene Autry and appeared in a string of 14 features for Columbia Pictures and 15 of the singing cowboy TV shows. And this was before Annie Oakley was produced. She was a busy actress. I started out at MGM for about three months. Then they sold my contract to RKO. I was there for a year before I started freelancing and made The Far Frontier in 1949 with Roy Rogers when Dale Evans was pregnant and then Dale came back. I freelanced in shows with Monty Hale, Rocky Lane, Jimmy Wakeley, The Cisco Kid, The Long Ranger, and many, many more. produced a daughter in 1949. Her seven-year marriage ended in divorce. Subsequently, she became romantically involved with Gene Autry for a number of years. series for a girl. It had never been done before. So they ran a contest throughout the United States trying to find someone who could ride and shoot and act. I got very upset because this was right down my alley. I felt it was me. I went and talked to the producer, Mandy Schaefer, and he said no. So I went back home and put on blue jeans, a gingham shirt, put freckles on my nose and put my hair up in pigtails. And I went back to Mandy's office and said, I think I should play that part. He said, you got enough courage to do this. Let's give you a test. We did the test and I guess I got the part and I passed. I've been playing Annie ever since.
at 4 o'clock every morning to braid my pigtails, have breakfast, and head for the ranch. We worked from sunup to sundown. We worked in Pioneer Town, and there was a big, tall mountain out there they called Panic Peak. And we could get the last shot of the day on the top of the mountain at about 8.30 at night. By the time we took the bus back into town, it was 9.30. Get a bite to eat, go to bed, morning. You're not hurt. When we first started, we were doing three shows a week, working seven days a week when we were on location. My father was a doctor back in Little Rock. He liked to go hunting with a 22 rifle, so I learned early how to shoot. start praying. I'm still a good shot. I ought to be able to come closer than that. It's lucky you didn't move. That one could have been real messy. Ellie, stop it. Stop it. You're going to tell me where my brother is. Sure. Tag, go get the horses. It's kind of dangerous to turn your back around here. Don't try it. I'd like to get a shot at him, too. There'll be other chance.
Love Lucy classic series, but Lucille Ball was married to Desi Arnaz. How about Leave It to Beaver? Infamous, or maybe famous, <laughs> Barbara Billingsley, who played them off, of course, was married. Ozzy and Harriet, the famous couple, out of which comes Ricky Nelson, the famous pop singer. Harriet, of course, married. These were all shows that, were, that came out in the uh, early and mid-50s. And there's nothing wrong with having a show about uh, married people. I mean, today, it, it still goes on. Nothing wrong with it at all. Marriage is great. Uh, a lot of people swear by it and love it. Other people, they got married and don't like it and need to get out. You know, marriage is all over the map. But the problem was, in the 1950s, with the World War II generation coming back, getting married and having lots of children, the baby boomers, there just was no examples, role models of being single and with a career, having something to do other than being married and having kids. There was just one notable exception, and you know what that exception was, don't you? That exception was Gail Davis as Annie Oakley. She was single, no children or boyfriend, and happy. Gail Davis, a very different 50s TV woman. In 1955, Annie Oakley licensed merchandise topped $10 million in sales. That would be a mere $1 billion in today's value. Her merchandise was a major market bonanza. Dell Comics produced 16 issues of Annie Oakley with Gail Davis. She sold records, costumes, magazines, and toys. We're mostly shooting television out here for such shows as Old Wyatt Earp, Gunsmoke, and many, many others, including Annie Oakley. And they, by the way, there's Miss Gail Davis now, who plays the part of Annie Oakley, and she's with Jim Garner and uh, Jack Kelly. Hi, Gene. Hi, fellas. Hi, Gene. Hey, Annie, are you on the wrong end of that rifle range? Well, no, not really, Gene. Actually, I'm holding this target for Jim. I see. You know, he's going to shoot right through the hole in this plate and then break the little white disc that's behind it. You ready, right. Jim? Are you okay. through that, Brother Brad? Well, I'm going to add to the fun a little bit, and I think toss a blindfold on you. All right. Fun for who? Don't worry, Gail. He's pretty good at this shot. Oh, now, Jack. <laughs> All right, Brother Bart. Oh. When I count five. One, one, two, two, three, four. Oh, that's wonderful. We're mighty fine shooting there, Jim. And Annie Oakley, you better stick to your laurels. Well, this is Dave Garraway in New York for a moment. Is there a safe explanation for that trick, too? Well, yes, Dave. I'm not actually that good a shot. I'm not bad, but it's safe. As long as I have Rod Red Wing standing behind me with live ammunition while I'm firing blanks. Well, Rod's an expert, I know, on the fast draw and on trick target shooting. Uh, high noon, duel in the sun, the outlaw, Shane, gunfight at OK Corral. Some of the pictures he was gun coach on. Hey, have you kids ever tried hostess snowballs? Well, I think they're pretty terrific myself. Just take a look at these. You see, every snowball has loads of chewy coconut sprinkles. Had men had difficulty selling advertising on the Annie Oakley show. Advertising, of course, was needed to fund the production. It was just that there wasn't enough belief in a female-led show, even though she was a merchandising bonanza. Hostess snowballs come two in a package. Two big ones. 